Now this machine was really developed as a response to reef regulations and as an engineering method um, to reduce the amount of what are seen as you know, relatively harmful herbicides and they are the PS2 herbicides and the more residual herbicides going into rivers and streams. What we're doing instead of actually applying a residual herbicide over the whole paddock, we're putting it into two bands, the residuals up against the row and the non-residual uh, knockdown herbicides in the interrow. What you're seeing with the machine operating in the paddock is from a distance not much different to any other three-point linkage urban type sprayer. The only difference here is that we have two tanks. One tank for the interrow for the knockdown chemicals and one tank for the row chemicals. And you can convert your existing sprayer uh, fairly easily. We know some have built them themselves from the plans we, uh, we have available and they say it works very well. Uh, what we've got here today is a, a model of the dual herbicide sprayer. The key part of it is this bar here, it's a replacement for your normal urban type spider in your, your urban type boom. Here are the wing nozzles, these spray out into the stool. They've got just 80 degree drift guard even fans on them, medium of course at, at two bar. And then you compare that to the, the intero. So this is an air induction nozzle spraying here. What it's doing, sucking in air, mixing that with the droplets within the body of the nozzle and then spraying them out. It's very large droplets. And so they're basically immune to drift. As you can see from the angle of, we've got of the nozzles, you can see the center nozzles not straying into the stool into the row at all, which is what we're aiming for. For different row spacings, it's quite simple. We just make the bar larger and we change the angle slightly. You know, we've got them all the way up to two meters. So, and also two meter double rows as well. It's quite simple just to knock up another set of bars. It's mainly for returns when you get a lot of guinea grass regrowth and that sort of stuff coming through. People tell us it's really, really good where you've had a bit of cyclone damage or some wind damage. People are using it quite successfully in plant blocks as well. Why I'm using it now is just to cut down on some of the PS2 chemicals and also do a better job in the paddock. I just thought, well, that's, that's a good idea for killing some of the really hard weeds that are on my river flats, sedges, cooch grass. Because I get floods every year, I just get inundated with um, weeds and I'm, I've got complete confidence in it now. Um, when I first was doing it, I was a little bit unsure because Roundup's a deadly chemical in the cane. But the confidence that the trial work gave me, I started to use it across the whole farm and I found that I've actually halved the time it takes me as well to spray my, my area. So that's, that was an unforeseen advantage, which is a huge advantage. Last year, I um, put balance out into the row space, but not into the interspace. It's cut the, the cost of the balance down by half. You're immediately almost halving uh, herbicides that are not sort of reef friendly. Generally, growers like to actually reduce the amount of residual herbicides that they, they actually apply to a paddock. Growers are actually saying, well, okay, if we can really remove the residual herbicides, then we've got potentially uh, you know, a better, better cane. We think now that there's about 11 to 15,000 hectares of cane that is under this dual herbicide spraying system and potentially a reduction of 8 to 10 tonnes, if you like, of PS2 herbicide um, applied to those areas. We think that that's a fairly significant uh, sort of contribution.